Okay, I'd like to call the uh, Wisconsin Rapids Water Works and Lighting Commission meeting to order. Uh, number two, approval additions, corrections to the minutes of the uh, regular commission meeting held on July 12, 2017. I'll make a motion to accept those minutes. Second. Uh, Joe made the motion and John second. Uh, any other corrections? If not, all in agreement, please say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Okay, the motion passed. Uh, action items number three. Um, 3.1 training request, International Construction and Utility Equipment Exposition. Yeah, this is a every two year <coughs> event. Um, when it was two years ago in Louisville, Kentucky, we sent two of our employees there. Um, it's the largest construction exposi exposition in the United States. They said it was very valuable to see all the different type of bucket truck and other utility equipment there to kind of see what was new to the industry and what people were using, ask questions. Um, so what I'm recommending is we send our mechanic, Jason Warren, and then one of our foremans, uh, Jason Hall, to the event this year. Uh, they'll drive a company vehicle down there, so that'll save ex expenses. So you're really looking at just the hotel costs and the mills because the exposition is free. Any specific equipment that um, they're You know, in next year's or? budget, we're kind of kicking around the idea of a skidster that can mm -hmm. have an attachment that can um, pull poles and set poles. Uh, so, and there's other, uh, pieces on a skidster that you can purchase to have do various things. Dale's looking at things for the water department as well. So I think that was one of the things they really wanted to look at. Where is this at? Uh, where is this at? In uh, Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. Okay. Yep. I'm looking for a motion. Well, I'll give you one. Yeah. I would make a motion that we approve $1,200 for the International Construction and Utility Equipment Exposition attendance. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Any other discussion? So if something happens to go over that $1,200, they got to pay themselves? I guess. <laughs> okay. No, I don't believe so. <laughs> that's, an, that's an estimate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all those in agreement, please say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Nope. Okay, motion carried. And who did it? Rick, you made the motion, yes. and Joe second. Okay, safety of our department update safety committee. Questions, comments, none? Line superintendent. <clears throat> Squirrels didn't be on the list. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's been a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else, uh, water department operations? Yeah, those two lead service um, replacements, were those done on their own or was that with, I know we talked about there was some yeah. grant opportunity. Yeah, that's a good, like good that. question. Those were actually on our side. Oh, those were our side. Okay. Okay. And the homeowner? The homeowner actually had, one of them had lead on their side, it's a building that's Bacon, now they're going to be abandoned. Um, the other one was on the homeowner side. They had copper already, so didn't need to go any further. Has there been any other updates on that, Jim? On the DMR program? Yeah, on the, it's still waiting for final tools of our 
plumbers and stuff like that out here for to be finalized. <coughs> yeah. 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 Would, uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Would that be, if the program is approved, would that be for, it would cover their whole cost? No, it is the portion of the portion of. Right. Okay. Both the plant, no leaks, everything working fine. So fire no leak, the check in the roof, I'll just put my finger in the holes so or holding up well. So I think they have good water quality, came back where you wanted it. Yep, get back where you wanted it. So. And I'll just I'll just make a point to you. You'll get the commission. will get a thank you note. But I did want to uh, thank Dale and uh, the commission for donating water for the community picnic last week. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? If not, office manager report. Continue to look great on collections. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We will. Still don't believe the number of Facebook contacts. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually down this month. Yeah, yeah, we were. <clears throat> but 16,000 to me is still incredible. It's still, yeah. yeah. Has anybody commented on the transmission refund or? Not yet. Not yet. This is the first billing that will show it? Uh, the July bill that they received in July, or yeah, July was the first one, then same amount to be in the current August bills. Was it like four or five dollars or something like that? Or? Um, four or something. It was about a yeah, half a cent per kilowatt hour, so oh, about, four, about a four fifty per customer, four twenty four. And, uh, and there's two, two, two still portions of APC timeline pending that may also receive refunds, but there's only been one FERC commissioner for quite some time, so they don't have a quorum. Was it the APC annual shareholder meeting last week? And they said FERC has a backlog of over 600 orders right now that are sitting there to be ruled on. So I think they're actually going through the Senate's going through the approval process of the uh, two new commissioners now. So hopefully that backlog will loosen a little. The smart hub, does that make your office operation more efficient? It does. Um, it certainly helps to have that type of information at the customer's disposal. They can access the information and, and they answer questions that they may have on their own. So yeah, it certainly does free up some of our employees to do more efficient things. They don't end up answering more questions because of it? Or? That's the whole, yeah. That's the trade-off. Right. Any other questions? If not, Director of Finance report. Who are the other candidates for the um, audit? Um, we essentially sent it to all audit firms that did audits for municipal utilities in the state last year. Um, so it's Cluster Mars and Allen, Wagner, uh, Johnson Block, Hawkins, um, Shank, and probably going to forget what Ann Baker Tilly. And we've received um, some sort of response, I think, from all except one of them, asking questions or needing additional information. Any, any revelations based on that so far? Not yet, but I guess we'll see in a couple of weeks. They're due, I believe, the 24th of when we've got the proposals. Do. Wouldn't Shank have the upper hand because they've been doing ours and we're doing the same audits over and over and over? 
Um, for them, they at least know what they're getting into, so they can probably, you know, yeah, have that little better feeling. But um, utility accounting is pretty similar. I mean, with the FERC accounting, it's pretty much the same across the board. So um, any any other firm that's doing it kind of gets to look at our financial statements and can understand what they're getting into. Okay. Anything else? If not, information systems administrator. What's the security issue that you talked about here that makes it more complicated for the implementation on the EMI? They, um, what we need is what's known as a virtual private network, which is point to point. So we need our own private network on top of their network. So that's something that they don't normally have to do. Usually when they put these points out, people just access them through the internet, you know, to get their information. Well, this is a dedicated network within their network that we need to secure the meter readings on the way back. So. Any other questions? If not, the conservation manager report. I'm surprised to see the size of the, the high school uh, solar array. the largest, that would be the largest installed system next to what? What would be the next largest in our geographical well, region? Uh, the library is going to be... There's only 20, right? Yeah, but the, in our system, that would be the next largest, right? Okay. The library is what, 200? Mm -hmm. That's... that's mm -hmm. DC, AC is like 130 something. Mm -hmm. The library would be the largest one once they're online. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I, I, I had in my mind that it was only 20. So How big is the library? Okay. How big is the library? You're saying over 200. DC is over 200. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> the safety data sheets, is that just a new term for the old materials? MSDS, yeah. yeah. Sheets. And what's the big difference? They just had to redo it. It, we have to upgrade them. Go ahead. It's actually a format change. Um, MSDS sheets were set up in a certain way. SDS sheets are set up methodically. Um, there was this whole global harmonization system that OSHA rolled out in 2013 that said all of these SDS sheets, regardless of what company, what country, anything, all have to be set up in the same deal. There's 16 separate sections now. Very, very methodical, very, very um, organized and strict. Whereas before the MSDS sheets, some companies would have a one page deal, other people would have 14 pages worth of information. So it's a lot more, um, there's a lot more structure to them now, which is nice. And there's 16 pages now? No, there's 16 sections now. 16 some are, sections? Some are like four pages, but it's a good example um, for a certain chemical company A might make a bleach, company B might make a bleach. Well, company A puts all the first aid on page one, and company B put all the first aid on page four. Now, first aid is section two, regardless of the company. PPE needed is section three. Fire um, fighting is section four. So it's, it's a lot, it's better. But that being said, with the amount of MSDS sheets out there that need to be converted, Again, it started in 2013. <clears throat> Not a very easy or quick process. Are most so, of the vendors sending in new ones now? Have they already Most, yes. 
Most of them, absolutely. A lot of the newer companies, but it's the, the issues are with older companies, with um, a lot of utilities. What we're finding is a lot of them have chemicals that have been sitting around for a while, or chemicals that we only use this twice a year. And when we ordered it 10 years ago, we ordered a case. <laughs> so we have these chemicals that literally the company might be out of business. So they don't actually have SDSs for them. They actually only have MSDSs out there. So it's, it's a tough transition, let's just put it that way. It's a very challenging transition, but a lot of companies, they were supposed to all be done by June of this, a couple months ago this past year. Um, but there are still some that are in that transition period. So. Lots of work behind it. Yeah. Lots of work behind it. So. I assume we don't have any chemicals here that have been here for ten years. Here. I I don't know. I know Sean Reimer has been going through and working on that process. Yeah, Sean was. If we weren't using him anymore. They got pitched or disposed of. Yeah. As he was doing this project, uh, Sean spent a lot of time working with. Sean Squared, I should say, working together yeah. to, uh, <laughs> the to get this done. You yeah. should, if you want to take a look at it, it's right outside Todd's office. It's a binder about this thick. So. Yeah. There's quite a few in there. Sean, <laughs> Sean Reimer's done a ton of work. Um, I've actually been working through and auditing his process now, basically going out in the garage and working with the different chemicals, just seeing what I can find and ensuring they have an SDS um, with a utility. It's extremely tough because a lot of the guys have things on the trucks. So maybe the day that Sean went out there to look, or the couple days that he went out there to look for chemicals, they very well could have been out on the trucks. So it's it's tough. But thankfully, with Rapids, um, the ordering structure, which is the biggest bottleneck with this process, um, a lot of that's being taken care of by Roxanne in the storeroom. So when you only have a few people that are ordering things, it's a lot easier to control because not everybody can go out and buy what they want then. So it's a good process that we have in place here. It's just corralling it all, getting it all boxed up really nice at this point. So as I say, Sean Reimer's done a lot of a lot of work up to this point. And uh, yeah, we're we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So just fine tuning it now. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Director of Engineering, Electrical Operations. Uh, as we commissioned an engineering feasibility study a couple of years ago, 
we essentially discovered that it was way too far from our existing raw water main system and the water on the property is much higher than iron than our present wells so we would have had to install the pre-treatment facility as well as get our raw water mains out there and the cost would have been cost prohibitive to to build another well so the land we purchased last year two years ago when did we get that uh, tangent to our current property looks like the better site for well five so We'll probably be getting together as a commission in the next couple of weeks to discuss whether we think we ought to sell that land or what the value of it is. So, kind of where it's at. The uh, recently purchased line, how much closer is that than the town of Grant? Well, about three miles. Three miles, miles closer. That probably makes a lot of difference. Uh, review of accounts payable. The new bucket truck is successful. Yeah, very much.